Okay. So I wanted to answer this question. Um, I already answered it actually, uh, but I wanted to answer it um, on a video. So, user MU1DU1MO8U says, if this sense of I that I feel is another thought, how is it seen that there is nothing behind that thought as well? It seems relatively easy to see thoughts as thoughts, but it seems completely impossible to see this sense of self as also just another thought. It's been many years and this self has always remained. So it's, it's true that it is impossible from one position from one point of view and that would be the position point of view of self and you probably hear, heard the um, description or the analogy before of the uh, something like if you're looking from it if you're looking from the mind made sense of self then you can't see it uh, in a way From that position, it, it can see itself, in a sense. I'm going to describe this, but, but I don't want it to be taken conceptually or heard and then try uh, attempt it to be applied from that position. It's not something that's going to be understood from that position. But I'll kind of vaguely describe it. There's that position that we're looking from that looks out onto the objective world including the internal world of thoughts the narrative the objects of thoughts as they appear in a timeline and a narrative based in time based from a reference point a subjective position what we're kind of talking about here is the subject not the object. The subject can refer to itself. So I'm sitting in a car, I'm sitting in the car park, I'm filming a video. Self-referential thoughts. But then there's more subtle layers of this. And I guess the most subtle layer, well not really, but a, a subtle layer would be I'm meditating, I am watching my thoughts. That's kind of a step back in a sense. So instead of following the objective content of thoughts, looking out onto what the thoughts are suggesting, what the thoughts seem to refer to, the there's a kind of step back, a relaxing of focus, such that the object becomes the thoughts. But you could say we're still looking from a uh, subjective position at the thoughts as the me that thinks the thoughts, as the me that experiences thoughts coming and going in time. Anytime that subjective position, anytime that self attempts to observe itself as an object, it kind of gets caught in a loop. So it, it, it it jumps, <laughs> this is a model, right? This isn't how it works, right? But it jumps back and it sees itself, it talks about itself as the thinker. And that's the, the kind of trap that it gets stuck in. It can't look at itself other than the, the, the illusion which, cre which is created by the co-arising of thought object and subject. The, the, co-arise together. That's what I mean when I say the, the self is merely suggested in the context of the thought. With every thought that appears 
about whatever object it's talking about or whatever it's talking about that thought appears with the suggestion of the subject that is thinking and that gets very very subtle um, so they dependently co-arise together to form like a view position that, that just seems to inherently be there and it, it, it can be felt, it's so habitual um, it has a feeling tone to it um, it has a quality to it a quality that feels like me in a way So you can you can try every time next time you look at thought stop go what what will be the next thought and then see what what it is that's sitting there waiting what it is that's primed looking for a thought as the thought appears that subject is almost already there it's waiting to notice its own context, its own existence, is waiting to confirm its own existence from that position. So I think what you're asking is how do you get underneath that? How do you see the, the, the subject as an object from, let's say, the ultimate position? And this is where it gets quite paradoxical because it's not something you're going to get from that position. That's a strange trap, the strange um, hall of mirrors, people call it sometimes. The merry-go-round of thoughts that you can't seem to get out of. And the, the more you look from that position for the thinker, the, the less you find it. Because it's the position looking out for itself all over. And it, it doesn't know that that's where it's looking from. It doesn't know the nature of what it is, particularly. It can't find itself other than a suggestion in the context of whatever it's talking about. But if we stop, and we go, what will be the next thought? And then entirely let go of any attempts to find anything. Entirely relax the focus of attention. Entirely relax expectations or ideas about what it's like when you get this and consider or feel that what's being looked for is already here what's being looked for is what you are where you're looking from so you can't find it you also can't get out of it and then just stop. Feel the completeness in this moment. If there feels like there's something wrong, not right, something missing, what is it that that's making it feel like that? If there are emotions there, just go to the emotions. and feel the emotion fully. When that emotion comes up, when that emotion resounds, let's say, becomes the experience, then what will be the next thought?
there's a clarity here, there's an awakeness here that allows these questions, that allows anything, any version, let's say, of experience. There's a different kind of, so to speak, noticing. A different kind of clarity. That's not a noticing from a position, which is inherently here already. It doesn't need to be qualified by a finding of something. It doesn't need to be completed by a realization. It's so inescapably already the case. That there's nothing that can tarnish it. That there's nothing that can diminish it. There's nothing that can remove it. Basic sense of existence. Basic all pervasive presence. In which all of these positions, in which all of this, these questions, this asking takes place. That's so unfindable from any, from any position, that's so unfindable from any objective attainment. Because it's that it doesn't need to be found because it is inherently this. So what's more certain than the idea of a self, the idea of a subject as suggested by the mind, is this. As it is, as it could not be. Now sensations, the present experience of aliveness, the body, the sights, the sounds, the sensation, the breath is certain. And that, what will be the next thought? What is it saying about what I need to find? What is it saying about what is elusive in this experience that needs to be attained? If we now stop and feel, look for, experience self, experience it not qualified by descriptions in the mind about it, what happens? Where am I? What's the mind? Where am I? What will be the next thought? It becomes much more mysterious. It becomes much less certain in the contextual narrative of the mind. It becomes much more certain in a, in a mysterious, different kind of way. As in what is most obvious about experience? What is undoubtable about experience? And orient in that direction. What is creating the doubt in this experience? What is creating the uncertainty about who and what I am? And then what? There's something so simple, something so obvious, something so already the case that From that position, the mind can never comprehend it. 
So it will continue to spin its wheels. It will continue to go around in circles to bounce around in the subject-object duality of thought and thinking. It then becomes a lot more about feeling. What feels like me? To the, the subtle thoughts, the, the subtle structure of self is a lot more subtle, is a lot more kind of mushed up with uh, thoughts uh, and feelings. Kind of indistinguishable, not overt and well defined, much more of an undertow until we take the time to let the attention dilate to the extent where we can feel it, where it becomes something that is clear in experience. What feels like me? Where am I? Watch for the next thought. Feel the position, form. As the thought materializes, let's say, as it kind of starts to form, starts to appear, as soon as it, with no urgency, with just relaxed curiosity, as soon as it starts to construct, let's say, as soon as it starts to appear, arise, get in touch with that feeling of what, what am I, what is certain, what is obvious was present. Feel this fully. There's something there that is very mysterious, but yet very, seemingly very elusive from the position of the mind. But this is obvious, whatever this is. It's so overbearingly obvious that it's undeniable. That's what I'm always pointing to. Not something elusive that has to be qualified by an experience in the future, but simply this. Before the mind starts to talk about it, before the mind creates a doubt about this not being it. It's boring to the mind, it's too simple for the mind. The mind comes after, the mind looks past it. It can't see it. The mind, the position is born from it. Spontaneously right now in, in this very moment as one thought, entangled with belief, entangled with a feeling of meanness. Where am I? Watch the mind. What feels like me? What is being added to this through thought? What is being added to the simplicity, the obvious, the self-confirming nature of this experience? And then watch. I can't explain the recognition. The recognition in the, the commenter here in your experience has already begun to express itself. So then we can just relax and know that it's done. It's just a matter of clarity. And that clarity comes about through stopping relaxing, releasing the need to control a narrative about how this is going to go or what this means or how this is and just fully releasing into the simple obviousness the vast infinite thisness of what this is right now what you are right now and it can't be the it, 
it can't be distinguished, it can't be separated out and categorised. That's what we mean by non-duality, it can't be distinguished, categorised, labelled and confirmed by the mind or concluded. Feel that energy of the mind as it attempts to do that, to project, to categorise, to capture and feel what is not that what is before that, what is much more inescapable than that, ungraspable, unobtainable than that, far more mysterious and elusive to the mind, but in the same way overbearingly <laughs> obvious, still needless, complete. So you see how I'm talking about this? Can you feel it? Can you feel what I'm talking about? Not the concepts, not the thoughts. The substance of this experience, this awakeness. The sound of these words. The substance of the thoughts. The textures of reality. Can you feel what I'm pointing to? And can you also feel how I'm talking around it? How I'm pointing to it, but the way I'm talking about it is so vague from the point of view of the mind. It's so incomplete. It's so almost doesn't make sense. This kind of illogical. This is the limit. Can you feel where that limit is meeting this experience? Can you feel maybe a, a distinction there between the mind's version of reality and this as it is, simply so? That direction, once you feel it, once you start to intuit this, then it really clarifies. Don't make that a goal though, but it really becomes immersive, simple, relaxing infinite right now, beautiful. No urgency. Expansive, all-encompassing, undifferentiated. All-inclusive. Excluding nothing. It's a great relaxation, a great stopping amidst the movement of this, the stillness that pervades it and is ever present, that is unaffected by the coming and going of this appearance, these thoughts. It's so paradoxical, so mysterious, so amazing. And you get lost in that feeling of it, that pull, that deep pull that happens, let's say, that resonates at a completely different level. And you just let that take you. And you see that the obstruction is much more of a act of doing, an act of complication, than something that's actually there, that actually exists, <laughs> that's inherently uh, there to it's inherently there that actually obscures this. And we see the obscuration as just a, an illusion. And we can just let go. Anyway, I need to go now, but I'll talk to you next time.